Hello. Great crowd. Um, so as Zach mentioned, my name is Daniel Brasilovsky. I actually came all the way up here from uh, Silicon Valley, flew in this morning. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um, so we're going to talk about kind of a few lessons I've learned uh, along my way being an entrepreneur. So a little bit about me. If the clicker will work. There we go. As you can tell by my amazing Photoshop skills, uh, I was born in 1992. I actually just turned 19 this last Wednesday. Um, and as I grew up, I mean, being in the heart of Silicon Valley is a, a very unique opportunity. My mom works at Oracle. My dad works at another software company. So most kids, after school, they go to you know daycare or they go to some other place. I went to Oracle, and I learned all sorts of things about computers, the internet, technology, and all these different things. And I started thinking to myself, this is actually pretty cool. Imagine all the things we can do with this. In 2007, um, how many of you guys actually know who Leo Laporte is? Wow, a few hands. All right, so Leo is this huge uh, podcaster. So I got inspired by Leo. So by the way, I'm a huge Apple fanboy, uh, as you can tell by my first company's name. Um, and so I decided, you know, if Leo can do it, and by the way, Leo has been doing radio and TV for like 20 years. This guy gets paid millions to, you know, do what he does. I'm like, I can take him on. Uh, so I decided to start my first company, which was a media group. And we decided to uh, not only help other companies create content, uh, podcasts, videos, stuff like that, but also produce our own content. And we produced a show called the Apple Universe Podcast. It went from 2007 to 2010. It became one of the top-rated Apple-themed podcasts. We were getting about 80,000 downloads per episode. And I actually became good friends with Leo. And now I do a show every month on Twit, which is Leo's network, which is kind of funny considering in 2007 I wanted to take him on. But at that time, during 2007, there was a company called Quick. How many of you have heard of Quick? Oh, that's awesome. Um, see, this is part of the thing. I'm up from Silicon Valley. Like, we're in a bubble there where everyone just knows everyone, all the companies and things like that. So when I come down to LA or New York or other cities, I'm honestly surprised on how many of these startups you guys actually know, which is awesome. So I joined Quick as the sixth employee in 2007, late 2007. Um, and they actually just got bought earlier this year by Skype for $150 million. Uh, which is awesome. Um, I'm actually no longer with them. I left uh, three weeks before the acquisition uh, actually closed. Um, but I'm here and uh, I'm doing well. Um, but it was during that time at Quick that I learned more about startups and how this whole thing worked. I mean, my first company, it was more kind of put together, real rough, didn't really know what to do, just kind of did it, you know, winging it. Then I realized that, you know, I'm really, I'm a young person. Uh, in 2007, uh, you know, I, that was four years ago. You know, I was 14, 15 getting started. Um, I wanted to find other like-minded young entrepreneurs like me that I could really communicate with and kind of bounce ideas off and really create this network. So the very first version of Teens in Tech um, was really a social network for young entrepreneurs. Uh, this was in very early 2008, and unfortunately, that first idea didn't really work out. And so what we did is, this is a very common uh, term in Silicon Valley right now, we pivoted into what we are now, which is, instead of trying to bring existing entrepreneurs together, let's help them get started. And so the whole idea of Teens in Tech is we take young entrepreneurs who have great ideas, but they just don't know what the next steps are. There's a preconceived notion, thanks, you know, many thanks to Silicon Valley, that the way a company gets started is a guy has an idea, he goes to Sand Hill Road, which is where all the VCs are, the venture capitalists with all the money, they raise $15 million and then they go build it. But today, because technology has advanced so far, you can have an idea and spend just the weekend building it. And that's exactly the kind of innovation we wanted to foster with Teens in Tech, is we wanted to bring entrepreneurs in who had great ideas. Even if they didn't have great ideas, they had a great work ethic. Because with entrepreneurship, it's about how you work. 
And so that's what happened with teens in tech. In 2009, I joined a company called TechCrunch, which is one of the world's largest tech publications covering tech startups and things like that. I was there for almost a year. And then in 2010, I started my third company, which is called the Case Finder Network. And uh, we actually sold that company as well to a company um, later last year called On Top Results. And that site is still doing awesome, doing a million page views every three months or so. So that's kind of my, my last few years uh, on a timeline. So uh, we're going to do, you know, kind of, I, I've learned a few things. I still have so much more to learn. But I wanted to kind of go over five lessons that, uh, that I've learned being a, a young entrepreneur. When you're young and you're 14 years old and you walk into this venture capitalist office who has $3 billion under management, you know, doing all these huge things, and this 14-year-old comes in, their first reaction isn't, yes, let me give you a million dollars. It's, oh, how cute. You want to build a company. So one of the big things that I learned, especially the hard way, is because I didn't get that answer not once, not twice, not three times, but many, many, many times, is don't take that no for an answer. And as cliche as this sounds and probably many of my other slides, it is very, very true. I mean, a lot of you guys probably get you know, no told to you almost on a daily basis. But how do you take that no and make it into a yes? Again, very cheesy, I know. Um, number four, when you're thinking, you know, how many of you actually, let's do a quick poll, how many of you want to start a company one day? Nice, good amount of hands. Um, one of the biggest things that you want to do as an entrepreneur is dream big. And again, as cliche and cheesy as it sounds, it really is, you know, where we are today, and especially in Silicon Valley, innovation is just crazy right now. People are doing things left and right, raising millions of dollars, and people are dreaming. And the reason they're able to raise $15 million, or even, let's go before that, you know, there's companies who are in the seed stage, which means they're very early, they have an idea, they have a good team, not necessarily thinking about revenue and how they're going to make millions of dollars, but they're thinking about how do we change the world. These guys are the ones who are dreaming the impossible. They're thinking about, okay, I have a rock star team of entrepreneurs. How do we take these people and how do we create something unique and awesome? And so that's the big thing is as an entrepreneur, you need to dream big. You can't think that, you know, we only want to you know, take over the United States or take over the UK. You want to take over the world. And these are the kind of things that you want to start building as an entrepreneur, is these thoughts. How do we take over the world? So this is something that I also really took to heart. You know, I'm very lucky, again, to be in Silicon Valley. If you want to be an entrepreneur, there's absolutely no better place to be than Silicon Valley. But one of the things that I didn't do early on was ask questions. When you have a network of amazing mentors and advisors around you, the biggest thing you should be doing is asking them questions. And so when I first started you know, my first company, I had no idea what I was doing. But I had people around me who knew what they were doing and have done it many times before. And I emailed them daily, weekly, just questions. And that really has helped me today. And now I'm re kind of reciprocating the favor where other young entrepreneurs are coming to me now and asking me questions. And that's the biggest thing is you need to be able to ask questions, ask tough questions, ask easy questions, because the answers that you're going to get from these older, more experienced entrepreneurs, or even you know, people in, you know, a little older than me in their 20s, they have a lot of knowledge that you could find useful. You don't have to be 50 years old to you know, know a lot of good information. You could be 21, 22, and also know a lot. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Number two, and I think this is a, a pretty overrated um, component of, of being an entrepreneur, is relationships. Everything you do is a relationship. You build relationships with people, with companies, with you know, venture capitalists, with so many different aspects, you know, in a, in a daily basis that you need to build these relationships. Because when I was at Quick, I was there for three years, part of the founding team. They ended up selling to, 
Skype, which then got bought by Microsoft for $8.5 billion. Those people that I helped start the company with, I still talk to on a weekly basis. And because we went through some pretty crazy stuff over three years, I remember there was a time in 2008 when we were just you know, getting off the ground, obviously a recession, that we didn't know if we were gonna get paid in, you know, later that month. And I'm sure this is a feeling that you know, the, the younger uh, people in this crowd probably haven't had to go through, but when you don't know if you're gonna get paid in a month or whatever circumstances, you know, that's an experience you're gonna remember for the rest of your life. And the people I went through those experiences with are some of my closest friends now because we went through these experiences together and now we have this special bond and relationship. So one of the biggest things is build these relationships with people because they are really gonna come into play when you wanna build your next company or whatever you wanna do. And then the last thing which kinda goes with the first thing which is don't take no's and answers. If you get that no, prove people wrong. People love getting proved wrong. It may hurt their egos, but they love being proved wrong and you love proving them wrong. And so I think that's the biggest thing is because where Teens in Tech is today, almost four years later, we you know, are doing almost $100,000 in revenue. We have employees, we have you know, a great community I can go back to those people that in 2008 I pitched and say, look, because you turned me down, I wanted to prove you wrong, and this is what I've done, and this is what I've built. And that feeling of kind of like, you know, an F you kind of in front of your face, um, for you telling me no, is exactly that feeling that every entrepreneur loves. And so without being said, go start a company. Uh, if you have any questions, please email me. I love helping entrepreneurs, young, old, whatever. If there's any way I can help, please email me. If you're oh so inclined, follow me on Twitter. I don't really tweet anything interesting, but you can do it anyways. Thank you very much, guys.